Hello Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing yet another update to the How to Import My Custom Bindings tutorial, this time for Alpha 3.22. Before we begin, if you're watching this and a new patch has been released, there's a chance this video may already be obsolete. In that case, I suggest you check the README file in my Dropbox for updated instructions. The README will be updated each patch as required, and should have the most up-to-date instructions for how to import my bindings. Creating videos is a lot more involved, and I do have a day job and other responsibilities to contend with, so my time is limited. For those of you who are new to the channel, welcome! My name's Buzzkiller, and I've been creating custom bindings for the community for over five years now. I support multiple setups, including the most popular dual stick and HOTAS configurations. My bindings are a bit on the complex side and may require a pretty steep learning curve, but they should still be easier than creating your own bindings, especially if you're new to the game and you don't know your way around the bindings menu and the myriad of bugs within. Speaking of bugs, there's a really bad one that was introduced with Alpha 3.22 that CIG needs to address ASAP. Currently, if you go into key bindings, and try to create a binding with a modifier, such as write control, which I usually use as my modifier. You'll see it does not import correctly. It does not take the binding. It just makes gibberish. Now this is a big problem for me because most of my bindings do require modifiers. The only way around this is to manually edit the exported XML file found in the mappings folder of Star Citizen. Uh, needless to say, this is a very tedious and time-consuming process. And since I now have seven profiles to maintain, well, don't expect any major updates to my binding files until it's fixed. If you'd like to contribute to the Issue Council bug report, I'll have a link in the description for you to do so. The more people that upvote and bring awareness to the issue, the more likely CIG will be to fix it. Now with all that unpleasantness out of the way, uh, let's get started, shall we? So if you're watching this video, chances are you've heard of my custom bindings, either from Reddit, X, Spectrum, or maybe you recommended them by a friend. Uh, in this video, I'll explain where to download and how to import these bindings into your game. One more quick note before we get started and that's on joystick setup. So for your joysticks, you wanna make sure you have them set up properly. The first thing being, if you have a joystick that requires specific software, such as the Verples, make sure you run that software, set it up correctly, and calibrate them. For the VKBs, they're more plug and play, but you may still wanna use the VKB configurator to go ahead and calibrate them as well. For the Thrustmasters, anything with Thrustmaster do not I say again, do not install Target. Target tends to try to consolidate the joysticks into one input device, and my bindings do not work with that at all. So do not install Target, and you shouldn't need any drivers for the Thrustmaster joysticks because they're fairly well supported in Windows as is. Okay, let's start by where to download the files. So in the current video, which you should be watching right now, you'll find a link to my binding files, which is a Dropbox link. So let's click that link here, and that will bring you to this folder. So I have three folders here. The first is the blank binding charts. So if you want to download binding charts for your setup, you can use these to create your own binding charts. So very nice. The second is old files. Now this contains all of the previous patches that I've created bindings for. But chances are you're not gonna want those unless you really like a previous setup, but they're probably not gonna work with the current patch. You may have to make some modifications. Then below that should be the current Star Citizen builds. There may be more than one folder. So if there's a PTU up, you may see like in the future, maybe Alpha 3.23 PTU or 4.0 PTU or EPTU or whatever. Just make sure you download the correct bindings for the current version of Star Citizen you are playing. So let's go ahead and click on this folder. And you'll see in here 
there are several files. The very top, if it's sorted correctly, is that all important readme? You want to read this readme. You want to read this readme, okay? So if this video is slightly out of date, this readme will have the most updated version of how to import these bindings. Again, I can't create a video every patch, but I can update this readme every patch, and it will be updated as required. Below that, we have all the different setups I currently support. Now, the my preference for Star Citizen is dual sticks. However, I understand some people prefer their HOTASs. So let's start off with what I support. The first is the Dual Thrustmaster T16000Ms. Now this profile, again, is two T16000Ms, one in the right, one in the left. This is the binding chart for that profile. I'll explain how all this works a little bit later. But basically this will show you what buttons are mapped to that profile. So if you're using dual T16s, this is the folder you want. Before I move on, the T16s, let's talk about them. These are very, very decent joysticks for their price. They're very inexpensive. They're probably the best low-end entry-level joysticks you can buy. There are some issues with them. They don't have the greatest button layout, and they have reliability issues. The Z-axis, the twist axis on these tends to go out fairly often, so they're not very reliable. However, again, if you're on a budget, these are probably the best sticks to start with. Now the next level up would be dual VKB gladiators. Let me go ahead and open up the chart for those. So this setup is for the dual VKB gladiators with the NXT um, Evo base, that's this base, and the Space Combat Grip Pros. That's the version that has the four-way hat and the extra extra analog hat switch. Now it's very important that you get this exact setup as I can't guarantee that it will work with say the standard grips. Now it might work with a different base just fine. You may have to do some minor modifications but you will be missing a few buttons because there are a few buttons on the base and sliders on the base that I make use of. But these are good mid-level sticks. So they're a little more expensive than the T16s, and but they'll last you a lot longer, and they're much more comfortable. They're much nicer grips. So moving on to the next setup, if you hear my cat in the background, I'm sorry, she's beating on the door. We have the dual Verpal Alphas. Now I have two different versions that I support for the Alphas. There's the original dual Verpal Alphas, and then there's the Verpal Alpha Primes. I use the same set up for these, but the buttons numbers are slightly different, so I have to have two separate profiles. So make sure you get the set that has the correct profiles. The dual alphas are very high in sticks. Expect to pay well over a thousand dollars to get everything you need to get these sticks up and running. So, but I mean, if you're spending a lot in Star Citizen, you have really nice ships, investing in a nice set of grips like the Verples, in my opinion, is well worth it. Next, we have the HOTAS setups. And again, I don't prefer HOTAS, but I do, by popular demand, support a few configurations. The first is the dual Thrustmaster, or not the dual Thrustmaster, the Thrustmaster FCS. This is the Thrustmaster T16000 on your right with the FCS throttle on your left. So if you're using that, this will be the profile for you. And then I also have the Alpha Standard and Alpha Prime with the Mongoose CM3 throttle. So let me go ahead and bring that up. And this currently is the only setup I have that does not require joy to key. Now I'll go into joy to key later, but this, this button setup has so many buttons that I don't really require as many modifiers, so I don't need joy to key to run my bindings on this setup. So again, if you have the CM3 throttle and a Verpal Alpha grip, this is the profile for you. And that's about covers all of the profiles that I currently support. So let's go ahead and say that you were using the dual Thrustmaster T16000Ms. That's probably the most common profile out there. When you open this folder, you'll see several files. Now what you want to download is 
well, pretty much you want to download everything. But I have a chart, of course, which you saw. Then I have, this is a more printer-friendly chart. It's just inverted in colors. Then you have the two joy to key profiles. So you have joy to key dual T16, board joy to key dual 16 mirrored. And there's a reason why there's two different profiles. I'll go over that later, but you're going to want to download both of these. You can just click the little download button here. And then you also want the exported files. So let's go ahead and download those. Okay, so I've clicked download on all the files and I've run into my first issue. I'm currently using Edge browser because I figure that's probably the most common browser out there that people are going to use. I personally use another browser. So if, and if you're not using another browser, you may not run into the issue, but the issue I'm running into is with the joy to key configuration files. It's saying that these files were blocked because this type of file can harm your device. So if you're using edge and you come across this issue, you need to go to the download and click on the three dots and then click keep. And that will allow you to go ahead and download those files anyway, and they should show up in your download folder here. So our next step is to download, install, and install joy to key So to download joy to key we'll start by going back to the video in the description. You'll see a link, joy to key download And let's go ahead and click on that. Now let's talk about joy to key now what joy to key is is a little program that allows you to change one button on your joystick or multiple buttons however you need it into a keyboard press so the reason why we need this is most of my profiles require modifiers and star citizen does not natively support modifiers now what a modifier is is when you press one button on one joystick to change the next button so if you want to do say use the trigger, you pull the trigger and that fires your weapons. Or if you want to hold down the modifier and then pull the trigger, maybe it'll do something else, like do a scan ping. So that's what a modifier does. And again, Star Citizen does not support that natively, so I have to use this program to use a keyboard modifier for the joystick. So here we are at the joy to key homepage. Now you have to be very careful here because you'll find all these little download ads start. That is not what you want to click on. If you click on these, there's a good chance that you will be downloading something that you don't want on your computer. So let's go ahead and go to the download section. Oh, this is new. I'm going to close it. All right, again, be careful what you click on, so any pops up and stuff. So this is the download section for Joy to Key. And look at all these ads. It's gotten worse this time. Oh, these are all bad links. Don't want to click on these. What you want to find is the Joy to Key installer from joytokey.net. This is the little zip file, so let's go ahead and download that. So again, that's back in our downloads folder. And now that we have that, the next thing we probably want to do is set up joy to key So let's do that next. Okay, before we start installing joy to key I want to make sure that you have your joysticks plugged in. Now when you plug in your joysticks, always plug them in in the same order into the same slots every time. This will reduce the chance of Star Citizen swapping joystick numbers. Now, joystick numbers can swap in Windows, and in Star Citizen, they can be independent of each other. So joystick 1 in Windows might be joystick 2 in Star Citizen, and vice versa, or they could, be, they could match. So again, I'm going to start by installing my right joystick. I prefer my right joystick to be joystick 1. So I'm going to plug that in first into a slot, and then I'm going to plug in my second joystick, my left joystick, into another slot second. So hopefully Windows will order them in that way. Now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and install joy to key And it looks like it downloaded as an application. That's good. That'll save us a setup. We don't have to unzip it. Okay, there's a little pop-up you can't see. I'm clicking yes. Let me move this over. Here's the GUI. Sorry, I'm not recording on my primary desktop for privacy reasons. Okay, so here's the setup GUI. Let's go ahead and accept the agreement. 
click next. I'm going to install it to the default folder, create a just talk shortcut and install and then next. And again, you want to make sure your joysticks are plugged in before you launch joy to key. So I'm going to go ahead and click finish and joy to key has just launched. Let me move that over along with the shortcut that we just created. So here's my joy to key shortcut and my joy to key window. It starts off with a default profile. The first thing we want to do is make sure it is detecting our joystick. So I'm going to move my right joystick and you see joystick one is lit up, has lit up and you can see the stick inputs moving. That's good. Now I want to move joystick two and you can see joystick two is lit up, but you don't see any movement because we're not on that tab. So let me click on the tab and you should be able to see the movement again. So joystick one tab movement. Good. Joystick two movement. If you see a joystick three or gamepad or anything else plugged in, you need to remove those because that will mess everything up for joy to key and it will, in, it'll mess up your bindings and star citizen. So only have the joysticks you're using for star citizen plugged in when you're running this. If you have any extras and you want to still use my bindings, like if you want to add pedals, that's going to be on you. You're going to have to figure out how that works. It's, it's, it's a pain in the butt to explain for, for now. Let's just make sure you just have your two joysticks plugged in. Okay, moving on. Let's go ahead and, and move our files from joy from our download folder into joy to key. What we're going to do is we're going to click on file and there's a button here called open config data and folder in Explorer. There it is. So this is your joy to key config folder and we're going to pull the two joy to key files that we downloaded from Dropbox into here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete profile one because we don't need it. That's your default profile. I'm going to close that. Now, in order to get those to show up, we're going to have to click File and Exit. So we completely exit out of Joy to Key and then click on the shortcut to start it back up. And you can see we have two profiles now. So once again, let me move my right joystick. Right joystick is Joystick 1. My left joystick is Joystick 2. Now, my profiles assume that your right joystick is 1 and your left joystick is 2. If, you, if it is, then you just use the standard profile. If it isn't, if you move your right joystick and it lights up as joystick two, then you would use the mirrored profile. So again, if joystick one is your right joystick, use the regular profile. If joystick two is your right stick, use the mirrored profile. Now, if you look in joy to key, there's not a whole lot in here for the T16s. This changes for some of the other joysticks, but for the T16s, it's rather simple. In joystick two, or whichever your left joystick is, you should see only two bindings. This is current. This might change in the future. This is just in the current build. Again, this might change in the future. Right now, button one, which is your left trigger, is bound to right control and F4. This allows us right control is our modifier and F4 changes our camera view. So if you hold it, it's a modifier. If you tap it, it changes your camera view. Now, this is only on the T16s. It might be different on the other joysticks. And then we have button two here currently is R and R is to control our tractor beam because there's currently no keyboard or no joystick binding to control rotation on your tractor beam. So button two is your tractor beam rotation. Now that we're good done with that, it's time to go ahead and import our bindings into Star Citizen. Okay, in order to import your files into your binding files into Star Citizen, we first have to find where Star Citizen is installed. If you have it in your default location, the easiest way to find it is to grab your Star Citizen launcher shortcut, right click on that and open file location. And that will open up this window and you'll go up one and you'll have RSI launcher and then you'll have Star Citizen right here. Now I do not have mine in the default location. So let me go ahead and open up my location. And when you go into the Star Citizen folder, you'll see usually a live build and maybe a PTU or EPTU build. And usually, but the one you want to click on the folder where you're trying to import your actual bindings. This is just my screenshot archive. That's something I've added myself. That's not there normally. So I'm going to click on live. Sorry if you can hear my cat. She's now yowling at the door. 
in the live folder, which is where I am currently trying to update the bindings. Again, if you're trying to change it for PTU, changing it in that folder. We're going to go into user. Now, if this folder is not here, that means you have not started Star Citizen yet. So you need to go ahead and launch Star Citizen, close it out, and then come back to this folder. So we're going to click on user, go to client, zero, controls, mappings. Now, this folder, if you haven't put anything in here, should be empty. I currently have my personal bindings for my primes in here, but you may not have anything at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our layout folder, so our layout file. This is the XML file for your specific joystick. So again, we're setting up the dual T16, so this is layout BK dual T16s for alpha 322, and this is version 2 of the binding. So I'm going to move that over. And again, again, the name is going to change depending on what patch it is and what sticks you're using but it'll always start with layout BK and then end and export it. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out of the download folder since we don't need it anymore. Let me go ahead and delete this as well. The joy to key setup. Okay, good. And about this profile now. So the only two files left over are your two binding charts. Again, these are just the, just the files that tell you what buttons are bound to what. And you can keep those on, a, on your desktop or you can maybe if you want to use the printer version, print them out, however you want to refer to those. Now our next step is to start up Star Citizen. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so here we are in Star Citizen. I've gone ahead and muted the music so we don't have to listen to that. Let's go ahead and click on Options, and we're going to go into Key Bindings, Advanced Controls Customization, and we're going to switch over from Keyboard Mouse to Joystick Hotas down here. Um, now what we're going to do first is I want you to open up the Control Profiles and we're going to clear all device bindings. This will give us a clean slate, hopefully, to start from. So I'm going to go ahead and that will bring up this menu. So for keyboard, I'm going to select keyboard. Mouse is mouse. Gamepad should not show up because you should not have it plugged in. And then there's three joysticks, even though you only have two plugged in, but that's just because this profile um, accounts for three joysticks. And in our joystick drop down you see there's a there's two t16s it really doesn't matter which one you choose currently so i'm just going to use the first joystick and click load now this will clear most if not all of the bindings out of your joysticks and your keyboard and mouse so it's completely empty so if i open up these there might be a few buttons that are left over it's not a big deal the main thing is that you've cleared most of them. Now, the next thing we're going to do is I want to go ahead and open up that Control Profiles menu again, and you're going to find the file that we installed. It's not going to have the imported, the exported, or the layout in front of it. It'll just say currently BK Dual T16 3-22 V2, which is the current file that we're trying to import. And that's the one that we in put into that folder. So let's click that. And we're going to, again, keyboard, keyboard, mouse, mouse. And you can see there's only two joysticks now because that's all that this profile supports. So T16, T16. Again, it doesn't matter if you use one or two. Just make sure that one of them is filled in. I typically just use one because it's easier. And I'm going to click Load. Now, this is not a perfect solution. Some bindings may still not get fully installed. The primary ones we're worried about is probably going to be in flight movement. So let's go ahead and click on flight movement. And yes, I can see that my pitch, yaw, and roll are not bound. That's common. So in order to fix that, I'm going to go ahead and double click on pitch. 
and I'm going to move my right joystick forward and click yes. Now here's a problem. You notice it says input two, input two. That means that joy that Star Citizen thinks that your right joystick is input two. Now that's going to be a problem because my profiles typically um, expect the right joystick to be joystick one. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And I am going to exit out of this. And let's see. I'm going to press my tilde key. That's the far upper left key on your keyboard, typically next to the left of the one key. And that opens up our console. Now, again, this is only if it, that shows up as input two, input two. If it just shows up as the as the as without the input two, then that means that you're fine. You don't need to do this step. So this is a troubleshooting step. So I'm going to go ahead and, and type in the following command: pp underscore resort devices. It's all one word. Space joystick space one space two. And what this is going to do is it's going to swap joystick one and joystick two in the bindings. You can see it has, came up with so many actions moved from joystick zero to joystick one and joystick one to joystick zero. So logical joystick zero is joystick one in the game. Logical joystick one is joystick two in the game. Not It doesn't really matter because everywhere else it's joystick one and joystick two. All right, we're going to go back into options, key binding, advanced, joystick hotas, and go back into flight movement. And I can already see that this used to say input two, input two, but now it says doesn't say any input, so that's good. So again, I'm going to double click on pitch and move my right joystick. And now it is still input two, input two, but everything else in the profile has been swapped. So this is good. This is the, the joystick that we want our pitch on. Okay, now yaw. I typically put my yaw on the x-axis, so I'm moving my joystick to the left. Now you may want to use it on your twist. It's up to you. And my roll is on my twist. So I'm going to go ahead and double click and twist my joystick to the right. And those are good. Now the other thing we want to check is weapons and mining laser. So those typically don't get bound either when you clear the bindings. So let's see. Yes. Joyce weapon group group one is not bound. So I'm going to double click that and I'm going to pull my right trigger and click yes. Now this is typically a problem on the T16s. Other joysticks may this may be bound just fine. But any joystick with the weapons on button one, that's the one that typically doesn't get bound. So let's go ahead and also do mining. So if you're a miner, you're going to need to go into vehicles mining, fire mining laser toggle, joystick one, yes. And I don't think salvage has a separate button. Let me check. It does not. And I think missiles is good too. Let me go ahead and just double check. Yes, missiles is bound already. Okay. So the two things you need to bind for buttons are your weapon group one and the mining laser toggle on. So we should be good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and click back and we're going to go, go ahead and, and test the bindings. And the best way to do that currently is in arena commander. So I'm going to open up arena commander. I'm going to switch to an offline game mode. I want free flight and I'm going to select a ship that, well, that's a good ship for me because it has two firing groups. It has all the buttons that we can test on this ship. So uh, I would just test any ship you normally have. So let's see, I'm going to go ahead. Well, let me go ahead and change the maps to Jericho and launch. And deploy. Okay, so here we are in Arena Commander, and we're going to just go ahead and test some of the bindings. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my right stick, pushing forward, back, good, left, and right, good, that's what I want. Twist is my roll. 
And there's a reason why I do it that way, but if you prefer it the other way, if you're used to flight sims, you can set it up however you want. Now the next thing we want to test is strafe, so I'm going to move my left stick forward. We're actually going forward. That's good. A lot of times, it'll end up when you push forward, you'll go backwards. So let me just test all my strafing movements. Left is left, right is right, twist up, twist down. Okay, so that is good. But let's pretend that when you press forward on your joystick, your ship actually starts moving backwards. So right now, I'm actually pulling back, but if I was to pressing forward and you could see your ship moving backwards, then you would have to invert your settings. So what we're going to do is go into exit escape, go into options again. This time, instead of key bindings, we're going to go into controls. And you see in the bottom right, you have your mouse, gamepad, joystick one, joystick two, and then three, four, however many joysticks uh, Star Citizen allows. I believe it caps out at five. Oh, wow, it caps out at eight now. Okay. But the only ones we have are joystick one and joystick two. Now, currently, because we swap things, the left stick is joystick one. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to change the setting on both hoist, joystick one and joystick two just to be sure. So if you press forward and, you, and your ship goes backwards on your left stick, we're going to go into inversion settings, flight, flight movement, and you're going to find throttle. Anything that says throttle on it, we would invert. Now, currently, it looks like it's already inverted, which is good. That means it pulled this, the configuration from my joystick file, and it, it changed it to where it needs to be. If this is yes, and you're going backwards, select no. If it's no, and you're going backwards, select yes. But we're going to go ahead and make that change on all of them. All, anything that says throttle. I'm going to change it just to be on the safe down. Now this works for HOTAS as well. So if you're if you press forward on your HOTAS and you go backwards, then you need to come in and change these settings. So right now I know that this is all changed and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on joystick HOTAS 2. So joystick HOTAS 2, inversion settings, flight, flight movement, and anything that says throttle, I'm going to switch to yes everything that says throttle and that should be <coughs> that should be everything sorry excuse me all right return the game and it should be it should have changed so i'm still good pressing forward is forward backs back left is left right is right twist up down all that's good next thing i want to test is weapons i pull the trigger my weapons fire i have a secondary fire which I can't use because the ship is currently folded up, isn't it? So if I'm going to tap my left trigger, yes, my ship is folded up, so I need to press the button to undo that, which I'm trying to remember what that is on the T-16s. Okay, I found the button for it, so that is, should be there. There we go. Alright, so if I pull my right trigger again, it should fire my right weapons. And now that my wings are extended, pressing the weapon group 2 fires the other weapons. So that's button 3, I believe, on the right stick for T-16. So weapons seem to be working. Now we're going to have to test something with a modifier. So on the joysticks, well, actually with the T-16s, all you have to do is if I tap that and it changes the camera then your modifier should be working as well. So, but I'm going to go ahead and test it. So let's see. Modified left is left trigger, and then I'm going to press the right trigger, and it should ping. Now, if this doesn't happen, that means maybe Joyda Key isn't being recognized in Star Citizen. Now, there's some troubleshooting steps that you can go do to fix that. Uh, one of the primary... Uh, all those troubleshooting steps can be found in the README, but what you can do is usually run Joyda Key as admin, and that should fix it. If not, you may be running the wrong Joyda Key profile. If, so just make sure you're running the correct Joyda Key profile, and maybe run it as admin, and you should be able to use your modified 
functions. Okay, that should be about it. Okay, so now you should have everything working on your joysticks. If there's still issues, make sure to check the README for all the troubleshooting uh, steps in there. Or if you're really stuck and the README isn't helping you, feel free to comment below, and I usually answer my comments on YouTube fairly quickly. Now that we've gone over that and you should be working correctly, let's go ahead and take a look at the chart again. I want to show you how to read these charts. So with the, every chart is a little bit different, but the gist is the same. So let's start off with our dual T16,000s. And you can see on the T16,000s, each button has a box with various commands in it. So if you look at, say, your right trigger, you can see that it is bound to weapon group one. If you look on the bottom, you'll see a legend. These are the different modifiers and modes that you can be in in the ship. So a modifier would be the same as holding the left trigger. So on the right trigger, you can see, well, modifier plus H. M plus H, that means modified hold, and then release should be your radar ping. Now you see there's also launch missiles, and before that you see a red MO. That means you need to be in missile operator mode for that button to perform the launch missiles. And here you see MM in green, and that's mining laser. So you have to be in mining load mode to fire the mining laser. Salvage mode, it fires the focus tool. So that's kind of how you read these, these different things. So over, over on the, here's one. This is toggle power to shields, modify. And then you have a secondary function, modified plus D, Eject. D means double tap. So you'd hold your modifier and then press this button twice to eject. And that's just kind of how these, that's how you read these charts. Let's take a look at one of the other charts as well, just to be on the safe side. Because they're just a little bit different. Let's look at the VKBs. You can see it's, it's, it looks a little bit different, but the gist of everything is here. I have modifier, you have hold, I have tap, double tap. Missile operator mode, scanning mode, mining mode, salvage mode, turret operator mode. So it's the same thing. So you have a button here that the primary button pressing up on this hat toggles your zoom, and the modified is the lights. So it, it's pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and look one more binding chart. Let's see the out bind double dual alphas. Again, slightly different layout, slightly different color scheme, but the modifiers. <laughs> Or it's all the same. It's just in this one I have the various systems, the colors. It's to help you find this. This is a this is a big and very hard chart to read. So having the different systems like your all your flight and control navigations are green, all your weapons and defenses are red, etc. So it just helps you find specific things. And again, so like this hat switch here, pressing up will toggle your VTOL. If you're in the turret, turret, then it toggles your starter fire. If you're in the turret and you press the modifier, it toggles your turret ESP, stuff like that. So it's fairly simple. You just have to make sure you read the legends and understand what all the colors and the modifier uh, things mean. One more the Verpal Hotas. Now this, again, currently is the only setup I use that does not require Joyda Key, so it doesn't have as many modifiers. The only modifiers it has are hold and double tap functions. So again, it's all color-coded based on what system you're using. So like the red is a weapon system, um, weapon group two on this button. Uh, the it, purple or pink would be what? Missile operator mode. Blue would be scanning mode. Dark purple is mining mode. And then the orange is salvage mode. So it just gives you an idea of how to read these charts. Fairly simple. And that should just about cover everything. Well, Star Citizens, that concludes this video tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful and everything is working well for you. If you're still having issues, make sure to check the README for more in-depth instructions and troubleshooting techniques. If you followed all the instructions in the README and still having issues, 
feel free to reach out to me via the comments of this video. You can also get a hold of me via X, Reddit, or Spectrum, but I really don't check those inboxes as often. I do check my YouTube comments daily though. Hopefully you enjoy these custom bindings as they really are a labor of love. Uh, I don't really monetize this channel, but if you do want to say thanks, feel free to click the buy me a coffee link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the verse.